Happiness is the ultimate goal in life. Whatever we strive for, be it better relationships, more money, or more purpose, we do it because we think it will make us happier. And yet, despite all of our efforts, happiness remains elusive. I mean, sure, we all have moments which bring us great joy. But on the flip side, life involves a lot of suffering. Just consider these stats. A survey of 26,000 college students found that one in two people have had suicidal thoughts at one point in their lifetime. Furthermore, approximately one in 10 have actually attempted suicide. These depressing stats beg the question: Why are so many of us unsatisfied? What makes happiness so hard to achieve? To answer these questions, let's firstly take a look at the negativity bias. The negativity bias states that humans tend to focus significantly more on the negative things in life than the positives. This bias is everywhere. For example, just look at how the media is loaded with stories about scandals, diseases, and terrorism. They purposely sensationalize these stories to get our attention because they know humans are naturally drawn towards these negative things. So, if you listen to the news and thought about our current global situation, you might think that things are worse than ever, right? But is it really? Could it just be the negativity bias? Think about the positives too, such as how homosexuals, ethnic groups, and women are all enjoying more rights than ever. Back in the 50s, women's rights were so laughable that ads would show their husband spanking his wife for buying the wrong brand of coffee. Then think about the steps taken to abolish torture and slavery. Also, consider the fact that in Europe, you were ten times more likely to be murdered in the 1500s compared to now. The reality is, we are in a much safer and more humane society than ever. And yet, we can't help but focus on the weight of the negatives and overlook the positives. But there is an evolutionary reason for this. By focusing more on the negatives, we could spot threats more easily. Those with their heads up in the clouds were more likely to be unprepared for a threat and hence die. So, over time, our brain has adapted, giving more attention to the negatives at the expense of happy thoughts. However, if you continue looking from an evolutionary perspective, you can find an even bigger reason for why happiness is so hard to achieve. To show you, let's imagine you were a caveman who was easily pleased. All it took was one achievement, and you were happy for the rest of your life. You wouldn't be very motivated to make any more progress, right? But what if you were a caveman who wasn't easily pleased? Yes, you still got happiness out of a successful hunt, but afterwards the happiness wore out. This caveman is the one who had the motivation to achieve more and get further in life. And in a world of scarce resources, only the greedy and powerful could survive. So, through natural selection, we have been molded into creatures that are never happy with what we have. And are always aiming higher. In fact, psychology suggests that we have a natural baseline for happiness. This means no matter how happy or sad something makes us feel in the moment, on average, we return back to this baseline. Just think back to times when you said, "If I just get that girl, or if I just get that promotion, I'll be happy." When you finally achieve this goal, yes, you're overjoyed. But as time goes on, you get used to your achievements. You start focusing on other areas of your life which are lacking, no longer paying attention to the goal you've only just completed, and just like that, you're back to your baseline. Even really positive events only have a short-lived impact on happiness. Consider this experiment where researchers compared lottery winners to paraplegics. Think about how happy you'd be if you suddenly won a million dollars, and how depressed you'd be if you suddenly became paralyzed. Yet. Psychologists measured how happy these people were a year after the event on a scale from zero to five. Lottery winners, on average, rated their lives a four, which was only a point higher than those who had become paralyzed. In fact, lottery winners weren't even significantly happier than the control group of normal people. The one difference they found was that lottery winners didn't appreciate the small pleasures in life as much. This shows we need to find a balance between always trying to aim higher. And being grateful for what we have. So, next time you feel sad, know that there are many psychological factors tricking you into viewing the world as a sadder place than it actually is. Instead, take comfort in the fact that our minds simply aren't designed to be happy.